Hi everybody, it is July 13, 2019. I want to give you an update on Barry. But I first want to read this comment from Old Soul. Like you say, this is all done on purpose. Barry, Tropical Storms, Hurricanes, uh, 2007, 2013, 2019. Today's date, July 13, 19. Interesting. So, uh, yeah, there have been Barry's that have, we had one in 2007, another one in 2013. Isn't it interesting? Ah, uh, don't they go by the numbers? So, thanks, old soul, for pointing that out. The person who left a comment about an oil spill leaking into the Gulf for 14 years. I want to thank the subscriber for linking below to this article. I didn't know about this and apparently not a lot of people did know about it. Uh, this guy Ian McDonald, who is a scientist at Florida State University. He studies oil spills. Uh, Apparently, where the murky Mississippi River dumps into the Gulf, it's been leaking uh, for 14 years. The Coast Guard has just begun to intervene to try to clean up this spill. This was posted April 2019. The spill began in 2004 when Hurricane Ivan toppled an oil rig into the Gulf the rig was owned by Taylor Energy, a New Orleans-based company, which managed to plug some of the 25 broken pipes, but the leak continued. Everything that lives and breathes in the Gulf of Mexico travels back and forth through that zone. Fish, seabirds, turtles, dolphins. Government is studying the impact on marine life. You know what? Forget your studies. Would you like to be swimming around in oil? I'm so tired of studies and hearings and just clean up. Ah, right, but it's deliberate the destruction, so we study. We hold congressional hearings, but nothing ever gets resolved. 14 years? Really? Oh boy, we're going to study. We can't figure out how much oil is leaking. The Coast Guard uh, claim that they've been working with the company to try to stop the link leak for years, but it poses a major engineering challenge. The wells were buried under hundreds of feet of mud in an underwater mudslide. The company has reported less than a barrel of oil is leaking per day. Well, Ian McDonald estimates that about a hundred barrels of oil are spilling into the Gulf each day. What he calls a sobering finding and neither the government nor the responsible parties have been able to stop it or even acknowledge, acknowledge that it rarely, uh, that it really existed until now. The Trump administration has rolled back offshore safety rules even as it works to open up more areas to drilling off the coast of South Carolina. Um, you know, I, I still get a lot of people, well Trump said that he was going to get rid of all of those regulations that are really um, strangling Americans. You have to look into the regulations that that guy got rid of. A lot of those regulations were actually well, if they were enforced, they were keeping us safe and keeping the earth safe. Well, as, as safe as, forget about it, nothing is safe. And, you know, these corporations just do whatever the hell they want to do. You know, we learn years and years that we're violating the violations just piled up and they never did anything about it. Well, 
yes, we can thank ourselves for never holding anybody accountable. Think about all of the life swimming around in friggin' oil. Alrighty. Thank you, Lady Court Tales, for updating us once again. I'm going to play Lady Court Tales' video, her update. She's in Baton Rouge. And I just want to say to all of you um, in this area, as well as Mississippi and Alabama in particular, please, could you do what Lady Court Tales is doing or you know, send me information, leave links maybe to, to local broadcasts or uh, local mainstream media news on what is taking place, or if you come across YouTube videos now this would be great of ordinary people posting on what is happening uh, because I still you know I've spent a lot of time researching and trying to figure out what the hell is going on and well when you see <laughs> this is the hurricane now New Orleans should be getting some rain the earth cam drizzled just a little while ago, the streets were dry. It did make landfall in Louisiana, and they claimed that it made landfall as a hurricane, but then quickly weakened to a tropical storm. But New Orleans seems quite okay. I guess the tracking now is a little bit off. Uh, according to Chad Myers, well, let's listen to this just for a few minutes. If you can stomach CNN's Chad Myers. South of the storm, Fred, now it's going to be on land because the low is going to move going to the on? north. So Wait, wait, wait. Now uh, it was Hurricane Barry moments ago. Now it's a tropical storm. Let's check in with CNN meteorologist Chad Myers. What's it doing? You know, I told you we'd tell you as soon as it happened, and, it, and that was, what, three minutes ago? Uh, yes, right. now Hurricane Center has now said that this thing made landfall as a hurricane over intracoastal city Louisiana and has now weakened to a TS, a 70-mile-per-hour storm, so losing 5 miles per hour from the 75-mile-per-hour threshold to be a Category 1 or a TS. That's like making an omelet with 11 eggs or 12 eggs and trying to tell the difference. Really, this is still going to be the rainmaker that we anticipated. This is going to be the storm that puts down rainfall that people haven't seen in a long time. They've been, people there have been very worried about how much rain's coming in, and then for 48 hours, nothing really has happened. But now, because the center is on shore, the center is going to move to the north, and all of that rain that was south of the storm, Fred, now it's going to be on land because the low is going to move to the north. So all the rain that's down here is going to be here. Then it's going to move up, and it's only going to move up at six miles per hour. That is too slow. For my liking, that's the that's the speed just almost where Harvey was when it was meandering around west of Houston. Now we don't have this storm meandering, but yeah. it is moving very very slowly. Right, and it's as slow as Harvey. Great, Barry is moving northward at six miles per hour. Uh, made landfall in Louisiana and New Orleans. You look okay, but you're over here, so the tracking, I guess, is different now. All the attention has been on New Orleans, but now, now the attention is on Baton Rouge. So before I go on with more updates about what has taken place, let's listen to Lady Court Tales. Well, good morning. Um, the storm is on land. It came in at about Golden Meadow, which is heading towards Grand Isle on Highway 1. It's a place where I got my first speeding ticket. <laughs> it was known for being a trap, although I was very young and had no idea. Um, the winds have picked up. Of course, I'm starting to record, so they die down. Um, it's not raining right now, so I'm filming. It's been raining on and off overnight. Uh, for us, the worst is gonna come in tonight and Sunday. 
and go in through Tuesday because you're going to have the river rising through Tuesday. So, um, our winds are about 21 miles per hour at some points. They said there were gusts of 31 right now. Um, just know that it's the worst isn't here for us. Um, we are in the high risk of rain, the highest risk in the Baton Rouge and New Orleans area. I know 12 people were rescued not far from where I used to live, which is southwest of New Orleans, by helicopter. There's an island in Terrebonne Parish. So, um, say prayers for those people. Things are starting to get more serious. And just because this thing that moves through doesn't mean it's quite over with because we've got water levels rising. So keep us in mind. I will continue recording. Well, there's a big gust. I will uh, keep you updated. Talk to you later. Okay, thank you, Lady Court Tales, and I hope more and more people do exactly what Lady Court Tales is doing, because this is the information I trust. Everything else is suspect as far as I'm concerned. Uh, look, this is our tropical storm, Barry, and look at the frequency being shot from Alabama. What's happening in Alabama? What's happening in Mississippi? And what's happening here in Louisiana? I need to hear from you guys. Now, you see all of these storms up here? Earlier today, well, let me show you. You see the frequencies up here in Kentucky? All of this is manufactured by man. All of it is manufactured by men. Oh, God, I am so tired of living you know, subject to man's evil whims. Whatever the hell these evil psychopaths want to do, they do. Now, it looks like we're getting hit here in Anderson, right? We're just getting hit with the frequencies. No thunderstorm at all. But earlier, this is what it looked like. Now, look at this. Whoa! What is going on here? I've never seen this site. I don't think that this is a glitch. I've never seen this before. I can only imagine that they were using massive frequencies. And as you can see, the holes I mean, this looks shredded here, and you see the holes? This is being hit with frequencies. This was at 11.28 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, so it was 10.28 in Louisiana. Frequencies going through the whole, I mean... The use of frequency, I've never seen the use of electromagnetic frequencies as I have this year. And we've never seen the flash flooding events that are leaving communities and homes and businesses and farms in standing water. Standing water, we're talking two, three, four, five feet of water. No, this is not how Mother Nature works. And I want to show you what I got later on. By the way, you do see nothing much is happening in this area at all. Nothing. Okay? South Carolina, North Carolina, uh, you know, Northern Georgia, and Alabama, and Mississippi. Nothing. Well, what does it look like now?
The reason why I ask you guys to tell us what's going on is because you look at this radar and it looks like we got storms. Compl it looked like we were going to get one completely dry all day long. Nothing. Now the sun is out. This was at 1.13 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so 12.13 p.m. Louisiana. Look at how this is jutting out. Look at how it's frayed at the edges. Look at how it takes on a, uh, like it's, well, it got tired, so it's sitting down. Um, not natural, man-made. Wow, okay. What is going on? You notice 1.30, uh, 1.13 p.m., we start to get these little blips, these dots of severe weather that erupt out of nowhere, but nothing happened in South Carolina. So, clear, something is very off with these storms. Wow, okay, never have I seen this. Is this the pulsating electromagnetic frequencies that they are using that's creating that? It could be. It could be. You know, we see these pulses coming from radar. Doppler radar, right? Look at this. I mean, how any mainstream media meteorologist sleeps well Look, I know Americans. They value nothing but money. Most of them, that's true. Sorry. They don't give a shit about anything. They don't care about the destruction that they bring on from their lives, uh, from their li how they live their lives, and the lies that they tell. You know, they're fine. They don't have to live the consequences of the lies that they tell. This is ordinary Americans. It doesn't matter if they're meteorologists or your friend or your family. Um, I'm sick of it. I'm really sick of it. So, look at how defined, I mean, if you can, this storm becomes. This whole thing is being hit with very powerful fre frequencies. And here is the blowing up <laughs> of, you know, the manufactured cloud that yes, it was sunny earlier and then we just got horizon to horizon cloud manufactured by man. You can see how, I mean, this thing, the defined line, it's not, oh God, I, why do I keep doing this? It's, all right, this is uh, up north and I believe Oh, not even sure where it is. I think, is this Canada? Yeah, Nova Scotia area. You can see what they are doing, and they're moving air masses in different, in opposite directions, which is very obvious right up here. Let's go back a little. Look at this. This is going west, this is going east. Um, what this is doing, who the hell knows, but you can see the microwaves, you can see the very defined lines, all right. I'm sorry for, you know, going over this again and again and again. Here we have the satellite images, but <clears throat> no, I wanted to go back. You can see how defined it is on the top right here, even when I don't, you know, zero in on it. And you can see how frayed it is at the top. They're hitting that with microwaves. All these ripples, microwave frequencies, which they can use to heat up the atmosphere, even heat up waters, bodies of water. And here's, the, you can see the frequency right through there. All right, I, I, 
I just wish, you know, Americans cared about something other than their own little lives. We did not, look how defined that is, by the way, right here, upstate South Carolina. And we got nothing. No rain whatsoever. That's why I need to hear from you guys. So, let's go on. Um, here's College of DuPage now. I mean, look at this. Are you kidding me? This is so massively frequentized. I mean, it's like... Not, this is, see all of these ripples, signatures of microwaves. You see the, the periphery of the storm and the jutting out of very defined points, frequencies. The ripples at the edge, frequencies. So, moving slowly like Harvey, and I really hope that whatever the hell they're bringing you, that they fail, that you're all safe. Doppler radar, heating. What is this? This is supposed to be, you know... Ay, ay, ay. Well, what you gonna do? This is the world that we're living in now. Yeah. Tropical storm. Completely manufactured by man. No. This is not, look, we all know, you know, hurricanes, they're always talking about the eye of the storm. It doesn't start in Georgia and then work its way down to the Gulf and sit there for days and, and collect moisture from Colorado. Oh my God. We truly are living something so mad. It's a mad, 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 mad world. Baby boomers will remember that. Okay. I was just turned on to a site, Rance Smith. Very good information on this channel. I subscribe. I recommend you do you do the same. The call called Tropical Storm. Uh, they just ask me. It's just a a blob that don't look like. It's going to spool up into anything. It was starting to look like that yesterday. But it seems like to me, like you can see all these waves emanate, emanating out, that it's definitely being superheated right in this region right here. And being fed down here, this looks like a mass water vapor generation. Now, you have to keep in mind, out here in the Gulf, we have all these oil rigs out here, and they can be equipped. I'm sure they are standard uh, to be equipped with wet surface air coolers. Uh, you know, it's a uh, heat transfer system. You know, really and very good point. Uh, I will link below to everything, but do check out Rance Smith. This is the only video that I have seen. So, Barry makes landfall. Come on, computer. Work for me, please. Oh, boy. So now Baton Rouge is the focus. Uh, New Orleans seems to be quite okay. Baton Rouge. Like, you need another flood. Uh, and they keep talking 
See, this is what I find very frustrating. Mainstream media, with these storms, they keep talking about how they're bringing with it the danger of heavy rains. Well, that's, I guess, coming. Potentially life-threatening flooding from the Gulf Coast. Um, they've been talking like this for days, days, days. Well, I, maybe it's just collecting all of the moisture it possibly can to dump on you. And I hope that that's not true. Here is another live feed, which is in uh, not it's in New Orleans, but I don't know exactly where it is. So you got some wind, no rain. Um, the uh, Reed Timmer. You listen to this, and you feel like you're reliving Katrina. Um, so you got the army out there. Terrebonne Parish, just outside of Houma, Louisiana, and here you can see some National Guard vehicles. So Terrebonne Parish, that's where Lady Cortell said she heard that 12 people had been rescued by helicopter. Why can't I find more information on this? ...that have arrived with the state of emergency in place here for Louisiana. Certainly the floodwaters are on the increase. We just passed low tide at 8 p.m., and it is on the rise. Early morning is when the next high tide is going to be between about 7 and 8 p.m. across southeastern Louisiana. The bad news is that it looks like tropical cyclone Barry will be coming ashore right at about that time with a maximum storm surge. Winds likely gusting over 75 miles an hour. There is even a chance that tropical storm Barry could intensify into a category one hurricane. Okay, that was last night. So we have uh, apparently lots of flooding in Terrebonne Parish. East Texas, I don't think that you're out of the woods. Um, but maybe you are. You know, I. it looked like earlier today it was up here close to East Texas, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, so, more updates. The Coast Guard is concerned about how much rain Barry could bring. Uh, this is what the damage in Morgan City, Louisiana looks like. Lots of wind. No flooding. Great. Great, great, great. Wow. So, parts of Terrebonne Parish under mandatory evacuation. More than 1,000 customers without power in Louisiana. An assumption, East Baton Rouge, Jefferson, La Fourche, Paris, uh, uh, Parish, I'm sure I've mispronounced that, um, and Terrebonne. Three Louisiana Waffle House restaurants operating on generators. Okay. More than 300 people went to shelters last night. Um, yes, it's early in the season to have a hurricane. Well, I sure wish people could just bring back their memory, looking at the sky. Uh, where is this beach house? Lake Pontchartrain. Oh, God, I'm so bad. Pontchartrain, I don't know. Lakeshore Drive, Mandeville, Louisiana. This was Saturday. That's the owner of her restaurant. A lot of roads are closed 
and the floodgates are closed and dump trucks put up to barricade roads and bridges and lastly Alabama roads are closed okay well I do want to know I want to hear from you guys please Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana. I hope nothing happens. I really hope they fail. And already homes, as you saw, have been taken out, but oh boy, all links are below. Stay safe. Everybody, stay safe.